So I am the director for networking communications and security services out here at UCSB. I started off in the networking space, migrated over to uh, picking up the uh, nascent SOC and of course communications with legacy telecom. The rest of the stuff, relatively uninteresting, uh, just the usual participation in the committees associated with our networking and security services. So if you wanna know more, feel free to take a look at that in the mailed out deck. Uh, go ahead and move on to the next slide. So the campus itself, uh, we are what they call a Carnegie R1 uh, university. So we're pretty heavily into uh, research. Our mission is research, teaching, and community service. We've got uh, $250 million of sponsored research. Uh, our operations, our expenses basically net out at a little over a billion dollars a year. Uh, so uh, a fair amount of churn going on here. Uh, six Nobel laureates, three past laureates. Uh, that is, they're no longer working on campus. And a population, as indicated there. So combined, we've got roughly 32,000 people out there, or 33. Uh, we've got a pretty heavy residential population. When I mentioned 10,500, those are ones that are directly in our residence halls, uh, at least in non-COVID times. And we've got a pretty heavy population in the adjacent Isla Vista community. I'll get into that a little bit in a moment uh, because there is some relevance to CBRS and all of this. We have about 300 buildings, actually a little more than that. I think the last count was 324 buildings across a little over a thousand acres on the uh, Pacific coast. A uh, few of those buildings are in a couple of remote research locations. And we have uh, about 4,200 wireless access points. So that gives you an idea of our footprint. I will say most of those access points, most of those are interior. So I want to echo something Shai touched on a couple of times in his presentation. Outdoor coverage is always, uh, it's one of those things people want, but it's also pretty difficult and expensive to accomplish with, with Wi-Fi. I mean, we're going through that right now. Uh, but I can safely say uh, our outdoor coverage is 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 far less than our inside coverage. Okay, let's go ahead and move on to the next slide. So challenges, it is always on network access. I think it's, uh, Shai might've stated it slightly differently, but everybody is looking for connectivity wherever they are. It's, it's a constant, uh, if only to go ahead and send out little chat messages and try to keep up with uh, other people on a project. Uh, we definitely experience the diversity of client device types uh, there is everything under the sun out here, especially since we have things like international students. You know, they bring devices with them that we may have never seen before. So that presents its own challenges. I think anybody who's had any significant experience with Wi-Fi understands that uh, one of the challenges is that there are so many different kinds of chipsets and drivers that Wi-Fi wi itself is um, kind of a bag of cats, if I can use that phrase. Uh, there's the diversity of uses. So we've got everything uh, that includes those IoT types of uses, but also sort of the, call it the more conventional uses. Whatever it is, somebody's trying it out there. That could be instrumenting a garden. I mean, we've, we've had that as a thing uh, where they're literally trying to measure things like uh, growth rates on, uh, on grapevines. You know, we have a pretty good wine industry going out here. So you've got everything from that to your typical Zoom sessions. Uh, as mentioned, Wi-Fi coverage is, you know, constantly a challenge. And the outdoor challenge is simply doing that site preparation. It's getting uh, cabling cord through walls. So we are always battling this outdoor Wi-Fi coverage. Um, I put down a, a slightly different one here. I mentioned secondary path requirements for life safety systems. So this is kind of a, a special thing for us. Uh, and I'm thinking specifically of fire alarms. Our fire alarms are generally tied into, uh, traditionally they were tied into our wireline campus telephone system. But I think just as many people no longer have copper pots lines at home, we're trying to get rid of that plant around here. We've been doing more transition over to the regular campus data network, but for various reasons that doesn't necessarily have long time power availability. Uh, that is to say, if we have a power outage, uh, at some point that equipment goes down because we don't have generators on every building. The air pollution control district is pretty tight about how they uh, regulate uh, the number of generators we're able to have. So that's a that's its own special thing where uh, CBRS can fill in a gap there by being another point of connectivity for those uh, for those systems. Uh, temporary coverage or backhaul. And again, I'd say Shai touched on this a few different ways. Uh, we have similar needs. We have places that are used maybe once a year for a couple of days. That is outdoor locations that are used for some sort of special event. It really doesn't make sense to spend the time and effort uh, to put in permanent infrastructure for this very kind of infrequent use. On the other hand, you do want to be able to meet the need. And so using CBRS as a way of uh, providing temporary backhaul connectivity, essentially on demand, 
in a given location has tremendous appeal. I also mention uh, backhaul in general. When I show a, a copy of the campus map, you can see that we're fairly, uh, fairly tight, but we do have reasons to reach out to say temporary locations that are off-prem where, uh, but are still in very much in the local community where I see some, uh, some potential here for CBRS providing, uh, call it immediate connectivity, which we may then replace with a point-to-point -point wireless link, but at least it gives us a way of bootstrapping connectivity uh, expeditiously and meeting needs uh, as they co come up. I don't know about you, but I certainly have had plenty of instances where uh, somebody has grand and glorious plans. They don't communicate those plans ahead of time. They simply arrive at a new facility and say, oh, by the way, I'm here. How can I get networking, right? You, that's a reality. We want to be able to meet those needs. Uh, special events, incident response. Uh, special events are frequently those kinds of things that are out there in those uh, uh, relatively lightly used uh, areas. But the incident response one, and I'm, I'll point to one a little bit later, Things like we've actually had the experience of having to deal with uh, a riot in the adjacent community and that required rapid deployment of camera systems uh, to help monitor uh, the situation. So we'll get into that in a moment. And I mentioned power outages. We are at the northern end of Southern California Edison's grid, which means if there is a fire down you know, down south anywhere within the, the 20 miles south of us, uh, it's not unusual for that to go ahead and disrupt our power supplies. Again, that can have an impact on things like those fire alarm backhauls. Okay, let's go ahead and move on. So this is a this is a action shot, believe it or not. That's actually the uh, the uh, Solana installation on top of our library, facing south. So if you really squint, you might notice way off there at the edge of the ocean, there's a couple there's an island out there, Santa Cruz Island, and I'll show you where this is on a map in a moment. One of the things you might glean from this is this was actually a pretty easy installation. Uh, basically. We already had obviously a good rooftop and we had a couple of other antennas up there. So we basically went up there and mounted this uh, in less than a day. Uh, this was a, a very quick thing to put up. Uh, you do see that there are two sector antennas. Those are 90 degree antennas uh, that are uh, posted up there right now. It's providing wide area coverage. I'll show you that on the map. Uh, the, one of the things I definitely like about uh, the potential of CBRS is the roaming capability. As I mentioned earlier with Wi-Fi and the diversity of client types, uh, whether or not a given client can roam and roam well in Wi-Fi is, uh, you know, frankly, I think still a bit of a questionable subject. But LTE has been doing that, you know, for years. So I think that's a much stronger improvement on the wireless technologies and uh, offers tremendous potential where that roaming capability needs to be as seamless as possible. Um, <clears throat> quality of service, again, you have a, a much better potential for delivering the experience that people are expecting, and especially for certain critical devices where you want to be able to put them in a class of their own. You want to be able to give them a certain assured bandwidth and actually have good delivery on that. You can pull off some of that with Wi-Fi, but uh, again, the, the uh, LTE environment, I think, is much better suited for that. And then the scaling, uh, as indicated in some of the earlier presentations, uh, particularly Andrew's portion, uh, you can go ahead and change out your sectors, you can go for narrower sectors, and you can add coverage by putting up new sites, but it doesn't necessarily require nearly the level of equipment that you would in order to go put in more Wi-Fi in an area. In other words, I can cover a large area, that's wide area coverage, with a single installation, and with several installations, I can cover the entire campus. So let's move on to the next slide, please. So our use cases tend to be, and by the way, that picture on the right there, that is that is a real thing. When I mentioned the uh, mentioned the riot stuff, we ended up uh, having to do uh, installations of these really, really awful uh, camera systems from a, a company that basically did construction sites. So there's a heavy concrete base. It took weeks to get the stuff in, uh, and it's a tremendous eyesore, and obviously it's not a timely response to an event. So just picture having CBRS and a couple of small cameras and a, basically a box that you could walk out, set on a rooftop and walk away. That's got a lot of appeal. Um, not that we have riots every other day, but you wanna be prepared for various events. Uh, parking pay stations, uh, we have those scattered around campus. A lot of those have been using a uh, fairly old Wi-Fi backhaul. Uh, we want to improve that. Uh, CBRS offers a fair amount of potential there because it allows us to transition that off the regular Wi-Fi. They're not high, high traffic devices, and we don't have to spend the money trying to build a wireline backhaul. Uh, pulling cabling out to those sites is something that costs thousands of dollars. It just doesn't make sense to do that. I mentioned fire alarm secondary paths. That seems like another good use case. Uh, by the way, part of the reason for that 
that uh, secondary path item is some people might be thinking, well, why don't you use your regular cellular uh, providers? The answer is none of the cellular providers around here actually have generators. They're all battery for their backup. So they're never gonna last more than three or four hours at best. We've had outages that have you know, ranged you know, up to 24 hours and even a little beyond. So uh, at least by installing our own system, we can ensure that we have battery and generator to provide continuous uptime regardless of the circumstance. Uh, we've got irrigation controllers. So again, this is more sort of call it IoT-ish types of things. It's these, these small things that are scattered around. Uh, we don't have visibility on all of them, and believe it or not, that actually matters for things like, uh, you know, we have droughts out here in California. We do want to make sure that we're measuring and uh, limiting our use of water to the extent possible. Uh, I've already hit on the rapid deployment of cameras and, of course, the temporary Wi-Fi for events. Um, there's also a certain amount of use in our adjacent community. I'll touch on that in a minute. So if we can move to the next slide. There we go. So this is the uh, this is the campus itself. I wanted to give you just a kind of an overview of where we are. The main campus is over there on the right hand side. On the left hand side, we have what we call our West Campus. That's actually relatively newly acquired property. We don't actually have a lot going on in that space, but we we expect to grow there. And then we have uh, in between sort of on the north end of things there, we have the quote store campus. That's largely residential housing. And right smack in between is what we call uh, Isla Vista. Isla Vista, that white section in the middle, that is just unincorporated Santa Barbara County. It is not part of the campus, but as you might imagine, we have a tremendous number of students there. Uh, we provide joint policing with the county sheriff's office. Uh, so when I talk about you know, things that might be unfortunate, like a riot or something else, that's the place where that happens. And obviously we don't have a lot of physical infrastructure into that area, but being well positioned with tall buildings around that area, we can do CBRS installations that can provide connectivity into those areas as needed. Okay, let's move to the next slide. So our installation is located on top of the library. Again, that's the one that you saw in the picture a few slides back. It is facing south, so it's covering down towards that lagoon area. Uh, let's go to the next slide. So when we're putting this in, you know, one of the things that anybody wants to know about is sort of what is the predicted coverage and then how does that match up to reality? This is just one slide. Uh, showing a particular path and the predicted coverage. Uh, so up towards the top where the, the blue end of the line is, that's that location on top of the library down there towards the uh, southwest where you see that uh, orange marker. That's a location near one of our residence halls. Uh, if you look over on the right hand side, you can see it uh, might be a bit of an eye chart. I know that, but uh, you'll see that it's indicating a received power of uh, neg 82.6 dBm. So, and you can see the RSRP, et cetera. Uh, immediately below that. So how does that match uh, our reality? And I'm gonna go ahead and try sharing my screen so you can see exactly what we, uh, what we actually had. Hopefully you can see up here, the location of the library, right? So we've got our eNode B up there and down here uh, on the lower, uh, lower left is the quote Los Robles Quad. Uh, and uh, in the metering out here, uh, the last number on the first line there, neg 81. So again, that was versus neg 82.6 is the predicted, neg 81. So it, it came out pretty well. Uh, the throughput we were getting on that was uh, 31 megabit down, five up with a 62 millisecond latency. If you're wondering how that was measured, uh, and I've got a bunch of other points on this map, I'll call out a couple other ones. Uh, I basically ran tests against an on-campus uh, speed test type target. I use speedtest.net as well as Google Fiber's test and took the median, uh, took the midpoint on each of the measurements. So that's how those were arrived at. Um, I did do repeated tests just to try to see what things look like. Tests were conducted on different days, so I've got different results. Um, but uh, the, the test that I'm showing you here now, uh, these were done uh, particularly with a BEC unit. Um, I've also done it with Multitech, and I, I have to give a shout out to uh, the uh, Cradle Point folks too, because uh, although not shown on here, I've used Cradle Point for uh, for some of the installations supporting our police department. Cradle Point units are very solid, honestly, for uh, for mobile use, which is something else we're contemplating uh, for our parking services people. Uh, those unquestionably would be the units to use, in my opinion. Mm -hmm.